Pythagorean theorem is one of the most uh, uh, famous proofs in all of mathematics, and it's one of the most important. And in fact, it overlaps all the different areas of mathematics. So it's hard to say, is this uh, a theorem that relates to algebra? These look like algebraic equations. Does it relate to geometry? It definitely relates to triangles. Does it relate to trigonometry? Does it relate to some other area of math? It turns out it relates to all of them. The way the Pythagorean theorem is usually stated is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But that's uh, based on a picture where the a and the b are the legs and c is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Uh, you can label these any way you want. So here's various ways. What's important to realize is uh, the, the one that's by itself is the hypotenuse. So t in this case is the hypotenuse. And if I square the two legs and add them together, like I've done here, it should add up to the square of the hypotenuse. You could also write the theorem in a different form. I could say that t, using this equation, is equal to the square root of r squared plus s squared. Okay, uh, This is actually the form you would use the equation if you're about to solve for one of the unknown quantities. So for instance, if t was not known, you could take the two legs, square them, add them together, and that gives you t squared, but then the final step is to take the square root, and that would give you this third length itself. Of course, if one of the other legs were unknown, like say we didn't know s, we could rewrite it uh, t squared minus r squared. So s would be the square root of t squared minus r squared. Make sure that you use the hypotenuse first, and then subtract the square of the leg, because the hypotenuse is the longest side, and you don't want this to come out negative, or you'll get an answer. Okay, that's a brief introduction to the statement of the theorem. The way it's frequently said is that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two legs. Okay, so let's see some proofs that the Pythagorean theorem is true. In fact, we're going to go through some proofs using algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. Now, I realize that different students who are watching this have had different levels of math background. Uh, most of you should probably be able to understand the geometry proof because it's very visual. The algebra proof depends only on what you might learn in the first months of Algebra 1. And the trigonometry proof, of course, requires that you at least understand the basics of right angle trigonometry, some of which is usually introduced in algebra or geometry classes toward the end of the course. Okay, let's start off with an algebraic proof of the Pythagorean theorem. What I've drawn here are four identical right triangles arranged so they fill a large square and they're uh, hy this hypotenuse of each triangle forms an edge of this smaller square. All right, let's like label this uh, segment here A and this B. Those are the two legs of the right triangle. And C is the hypotenuse. And what we're going to do is find the area of the large square in two different ways. Okay, first um, we can look at it as just what is the overall length of each side of this large square. Well this is a and so this is a plus b times a plus b. This is b. Okay so I could say a plus b squared or a plus b times a plus b. All right. This is the same as if we calculate it piece by piece. So one piece would be this smaller square c squared and then four times the area of one of these triangles, which is one half the base times the height. One half the base times the height. Okay? And then just simplify the algebra and see what we get. Okay, four times a half is two. And so over here, if I uh, take a plus b, the quantity squared, it's a squared plus two ab plus b squared. If you've been into Algebra 1, you know how to do this. All right. On this side, we have c squared plus 2ab. Well, look at that. If I subtract 2ab from both sides, I'm left with a squared 
plus b squared is equal to c squared. And that is the Pythagorean theorem, and we've just proved it algebraically. Interestingly, we can turn this into a geometric proof if we simply rearrange the four triangles. So now all I've done is I've taken two of the triangles and put them in one corner, two, put them in the other corner, and so this length is a, this length is a, so this area here is a squared. This is the longer leg of the triangle, and so is this, so this is b squared, and that's equal to c squared. So if I just think of it geometrically, that the squares of the lengths are literally the areas of the squares, we also can see that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I call this the furniture proof because if you have furniture in a room, the amount of carpet that shows through is not affected by how you rearrange the furniture. So sliding the triangles into the corners like this might change the distribution of how much carpet is visible, but the total area of carpet would be the same. Here's a classic geometric proof of the Pythagorean theorem. And what we have here is a yellow right triangle, and we have literal squares built on the sides. These uh, red and blue square squares are built on the legs, and then down here is the hypotenuse. Okay. Now, we're, we're going to actually distort the squares. I'll show you how this starts. Okay. We're going to distort the squares, but we're going to do it in such a way that we don't change the area. We're changing this uh, square into a parallelogram, and we're shearing it. We're actually moving the, this top part of the square so it's parallel to the bottom. And so notice that the base stays the same, and the height stays the same. You can also notice at this stage, by the way, that this triangle, uh, where it's overlapped, exactly fits in this little pink triangle over here. So it would refit into the same original square. Okay, let's run the demo. And so if I distort both these squares into parallelograms, they fit precisely into this square built on the hypotenuse. We shear it one more time, and there we have it. So the area of this square is exactly equal to the area of this rectangle, and this square is equal to the area of this rectangle. Therefore, uh, the sum of the squares of the two legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. Now, to make this a rigorous proof, we need to actually show that uh, the parallelograms we distorted up here actually fit down into this bottom square. We, we can achieve that if you notice that this yellow triangle is congruent to this triangle up here. Notice this side is equal to this side. Notice that this side is equal to this side, which equals this side, and they both have right angles. So by side angle side, they're congruent. In other words, they're identical triangles. Okay. So when this fits into and covers this triangle, this edge is exactly C, the third side, just like this length here. And therefore, it's equal to this length here, which is why when I slide it down in, it exactly fits. Okay. Now this does not depend on the shape. I could change the shape of the triangle and run the demo again, and it'll still work. So this really is a uh, complete geometric proof of the statement we were trying to show. The a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, we've seen proofs based on algebra and geometry. Here's a proof based on trigonometry. Let's label this triangle. It's a right triangle. Let's label it A, B, C with capital letters. And the standard approach is to label the opposite sides with lowercase letters. So this would be side little a, little b, and little c for this entire hypotenuse here. This is a right triangle. And when I do a perpendicular down to the, uh, to the hypotenuse of the large triangle, I've divided this into two smaller triangles that are both similar to the original. Okay. Let's look at this length right here. Let's call that x. And then this length here we're going to call y. And let's figure out what x and y are. Well, uh, from trigonometry, 
you know that the, this, if you look at angle A, this is the adjacent side and that's the hypotenuse. So x over b is the cosine of a. Or this could be rewritten x equals b cosine a. What about y? Well, for this angle b here, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, we would have y over a is equal to the cosine of b. And from that we could get y is equal to a cosine b. Notice that these two lengths add up to c. So b cosine a plus a cosine b is equal to length c. Since this large triangle is a right triangle, we can find the cosine of a and the cosine of b directly from the figure. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So for this large triangle in angle A, this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse. That's B over C. So this is B over C. The cosine of B is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, for again, for the large triangle, uh, this is the hypotenuse and this is the adjacent side for angle B. So that's going to be A over C. So we have b times b over c plus a times a over c equals c. Multiply through by c. The c cancels here, c cancels here, and I have c squared over there. But that's just b squared and that's just a squared. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so there you've seen that the Pythagorean theorem uh, belongs to algebra, it belongs to geometry, it belongs to trigonometry. It belongs in many areas of math that we haven't even touched or you won't even be aware of until and unless you were to major in math or physics or engineering or something like that. And you're, you're going to see the Pythagorean theorem popping up over and over again in your career.